Node.js has this very cool module called child process. It basically lets you spin up new child processes from your current process for various different reasons. For example, maybe you want to create a new process where you want to do some heavy computation so that it doesn't really affect your old process, or maybe you want to do something completely isolated. There can be many reasons, and we're going to take a look exactly how to do that. And also we're going to talk about the difference between worker threads and child processes, because I already have a video on the worker threads, and these two concepts are very similar, and there are some implications for both of them. So if you're ready and curious about learning child processes, Let's get started. Okay, friends, so before we look at the code of child processes and how to actually spin them up and use them, I would really suggest going to the Blackboard to first of all, understand the difference between worker threads and child processes, because I'm pretty sure you're already asking this question yourself. So worker threads, first of all, in worker threads, we have a process and the process has a main thread of Node.js and we can also spin up additional threads like this one, this is no longer going to be a main thread. So this is just a newly spun up thread. And of course, they can communicate with each other. So threads can communicate to the main thread and exchange information. And you can achieve this by using the worker threads. But in child processes, what we have is what we're doing is we're spinning up new complete process. So the new process is going to live side by side to the old process. So literally here, or maybe let's let's make it like put it a bit down because it is a child process of the main process. So it's not equivalent. So it's going to live somewhere here. And all of them have main threads as well. All right. So what are the use cases then? So whenever you create a new process here, you achieve a complete isolation. So this process is completely isolated from the process that we had before. So this is the process that we had before. And this one has its own memory, has its own place in the memory. All right, the operating system treats it, treats it as a completely separate process. So what, what means is whenever this process crashes for some reason, it's not going to affect this process that's already running here. So it's completely isolated. And it's basically suggests that whatever you the logic you put here, it should be also isolated as much as possible from all these three different processes compared to worker threads. Worker threads are running within the same process, so they should be related. And if one worker thread crashes, it already affects the whole process. So when you need to complete when you need complete isolation or want to utilize external processes, you're going with child processes. Choose worker threads for parallel computation within a single process. So if you simply want parallelization between within the process, then you go with worker threads. Second, resource utilization. Child processes typically have higher resource overhead compared to worker threads due to process creation and management. So as you know, creating a new process is not so easy. It's not a piece of cake. So it is some computation that the operating system has to do. So you gotta be careful and use worker threads like here if you simply want to do some parallel computation and not necessarily achieve isolation with processes. All right. So and complexity. Child processes are simpler to implement and manage compared to worker threads. And well, obviously you can guess why, which require careful handling of shared memory and synchronization. So as we said, these guys need require synchronization because they are within the same process and tightly coupled. While these guys don't need don't need much synchronization. There's a way to exchange information between them, as we're going to see later in the video. But still, they're isolated, meaning there shouldn't be much communication overhead, which leads to less management from our side. All right. Now let's go back to the code and see what this child process is all about. So there are three types of two ways of creating a child process. The first one is called exec, and you can import it from the child process module. What exec is going to do is it literally accepts a command line, a command, not a command line. So a command is going to be string. And of course, you can pass a callback as well. So the command is going to be this. So ls, basically, as you know, is just going to list all the files that we have. And the callback is the following. So we have an error, the standard output, and we have a standard error as well. So the error is going to happen when there's an actual error. 
standard output is when we console log something out and standard error is going to print it when we actually throw an error ourselves. So let's run this exec and let's see what we're getting in the console. So I'm going to say node index.js and we're going to see that it simply lists all these um, files that I have in my directory. Now, this didn't spin up a new node process because what we're doing is we're using exec, but we're simply running a, a command, all right, in the command line. We're not targeting any node process here or node script, okay? So this is one way, but a more common way that you would see using exec is actually uh, the second type called exec file, all right? So the exec file looks a bit different in which we are having a path resolver to resolve this file name, which also lives here, exec file processor. This is how I called it. And we're gonna use node. We're gonna give it a path. And of course, do all the error handling if needed. But let's look at the this file, exec file processor. What's gonna do is it has a simple counter up to 1 million and it's going to console log process, uh, processing entries finished when it's done. So if I save this, and I run index again, uh, we're gonna see that it did the processing and it finished. So basically, whenever you wanna run an external script, a node script, you can use exec file. And if I go to the documentation of child process, we can see that actually um, it's, it's a pretty good documentation. So you can come here and, and see what different types of options you can pass here. So you can pass an encoding option, you can give environment variables, you can give a timeout, a buffer, as you can also use a signal to use a board signal and so on. So it's pretty good. All right. So we're going to go back here just to have a good overview. And I bet this one is understood. So we're simply calling a separate file. Now there's another one. This one is called spawn. So what is the difference between spawn and exec because so far it looks very similar. So in a spawn where what we're going to do is we're going to use find also a command line script. All right, nothing, nothing big, no rocket science. And we're going to get some data. So we're saying on data, we're going to print this out on error, We're going to print the error out and so on. So let me simply run this guy and show you the difference. So I'm going to run this and we're simply getting finding all the files that I have in my, in my directory, very simple, but there is one big difference. So as you can see, this one is kind of event driven. This one actually listens for the data event. So apparently the spawn, whenever you run spawn, again, you give it a command, but it returns an event or it registers events. So it, you can listen for errors. You can listen for data. All right. It doesn't give you a callback right away, like in exec. Here you def have to define a callback, but this one listens for different um, events, which kind of signifies that. So in the spawn, what we're going to have is we are going to be dealing or it is good for dealing with large amounts of data. All right. So if you have a lot of data here, obviously, if you use exec and invoke this uh, script that deals with a lot of data, uh, you're going to freeze your application, you're going to freeze your main thread, so especially if you don't have any worker threads, all right. So you're going to freeze your main thread while you're reading all of that or, or doing all of that computation. While with spawn, this is kind of event driven, meaning it's asynchronous. So it's going to get the data in chunks one by one. So on is going to take this chunk. And then one second later, it's going to take another chunk and print the chunks. Uh, one by one. Well, it printed everything um, in one go because we really don't have that much data, but it's really good for, for example, dealing with, um, as I said already with big data, if you're doing network requests, and of course you can sp spawn like a, a web server with, with spawn and listen for the events that are incoming, maybe file upload and so on in a different process, which also can be good. But I'm not going to show that because you can easily do that. Just put a file name in here and uh, write node and, and file name in here. And you're going to create your node, uh, new express server and listen for the routes just the way you would do in a normal way. 
All right. So, and the last way of creating a process is the fork. And this one is also very interesting. So fork looks very similar. So we have a fork processor and what it's going to do is it's going to listen to message and um, it can also send, uh, send a message. So this is the one that can actually communicate with each other. As I said, if you remember, some of the processes uh, can communicate each other. And this is done when you are actually using the fork. So fork is here. So first of all, you can listen for a message. Let's go inside the fork process. You're going to see that we have this process dot send. So this is going to send the counter to the parent process. And you can also send this hello world object into the child. So the child is going to also listen for a message and say message from parent process. All right. Now let me save this and I will go and execute this. And you can see this is coming from the parent. And now all these counters are coming from the child. How cool is that? Now let's talk about some of the implications. All right. So as we saw, uh, or as we talked about, whenever you have you're dealing with a large data, make sure to use spawn because then you're going to be utilizing event driven uh, an event driven uh, architecture and, and asynchronity and asynchronity. I cannot pronounce that word. Um, basically, you're going to avoid blocking your main thread um, so that the, the exec like this one doesn't hold all the data in the buffer and doesn't slow you down. The second one is related to security. All right. Whenever you're dealing with uh, child processes, and I also mentioned this in my previous node security best practices video, don't really don't put the user input into your child processes. First of all, don't invoke the processes based on some user input. Don't let the user in user specify the direct path to your file. And also don't send any data to your child process from the user input. The hackers can really hack this. All right. And I think that's pretty much it. We learned everything that we needed. We know the difference between worker threads and child processes. We know some of the implications when it comes to performance and security. And you're good to go, guys. I will see you guys in the next one. If you liked the video, of course, smash like and subscribe so that you don't miss this kind of videos. And good luck in your coding journey.